Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More, it's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to Vintage Rack from Ego Vasily F8. It's a fantastic multi-effect app, which um, is also a universal app, so it works on iPhone, iPad, MacBook, and including M1 chips. And as you can see at the moment on the screen, it is used inside AUM as an AUV free instance, but of course it works also as a standalone. It supports audio bus interrupt as well. So, but before I continue to with the tutorial, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. So in this tutorial, in this first tutorial of the series, I'm going to introduce you to Vintage Rack, what it can do, and also give you an overview of the user interface. So let's start, first of all, with the user interface, and then I'll go into some of the presets as well. At the top, you find the number of buttons. The first four say um, A, B, C, D. Those are banks. So you have four banks. Um, with a predefined uh, preset, but you also have uh, uh, user banks as well. And indeed, if you click here where it says up, you go into the settings and you can switch to additional user presets bank, clicking on here, and then you click on the X and you see that you have now banks E to H, which are actually empty. They are um, uh, reserved for user presets. After these four buttons, you have six buttons which corresponds to the preset. So if I click on the first one, there will be the first preset on bank E. And indeed, you find the name here, E, for bank E, and one for preset number one. So let's switch back the additional user presets bank to off, so that we can see the first bank A to D. Okay, you have a save button as well to save the preset, and you have an up button, which, of course, as I just um, uh, showed you, you can actually use it to change settings. And um, for the application, there are a lot of settings, including uh, for MIDI assignment and mapping as well. You have also a question mark button, which helps you to, to really navigate uh, how Vintage Rack works and as you can see yeah there's a lot of explanation the help is very very well detailed but at the essence it is a multi-effect which simulate hardware actual hardware from the 70s and 80s it gives you that nice uh, low um, fi um, natural sound Okay, so um, progressing further in terms of the user interface, you can see a number of vertical slots here. There are actually seven. The first one which and the last one, so the input and the output, are fixed slots, so you cannot change them. Okay, but the five in the middle can be changed in terms of what module or effect uh, you want to use. So starting on the left hand side, you can see you have an input and you have also a fader, which you can use uh, clicking and holding, moving up and down. Of course, if you have a mouse, but um, you can also use gesture and controls directly on your device, if that is supported, of course. And you can see the changes in real time. Hopefully you hear, I have a piano connected and um, you can hear, you can change the input level up and down. Double click to go to the default as it is normal now in many applications. You have a mute button here, and then you have access to additional parameters for this module, which I'll show you in a sec. And below you have an indication of left and right channels. When you click on a note or you send a note to the input, you see it's green and you can see also the levels going up. On the left, of course, for the input and also on the right hand side for the output, as I will explain in a moment. We are working in uh, an AUV free mode, which means that um, if you see a yellow uh, instead of a green color on the left and right channel, it means that there is possibility of uh, an overload in terms of processing throughout the module. So just remember that. 
Before I go into the parameters, so I want to show you that you have here five slot, and if you click what it says empty, this is where you can access the different effects or module. So you have access to empty, which is effectively effectively a shortcut to empty, um, and the uh, that slot, if you like. You have a compressor here, really nice. And, um, and of course, you have access to parameters, uh, for each of the different module. If you want to change the module, click again on the name. So you can go, for example, to a console equalizer, or you can have access to a delay effect, a reverse delay as well. You have dimension D in terms of chorus, really well known, and symbol in terms of chorus as well. Instant flange, you have uh, easy flange as well with a lot of different parameters. Um, you have a, a phase box, which effectively is a phaser with some parameters, of course. And then if you want to see the rest of modules, click here where it says module two, and you have access to a phase, phase shift. Uh, again, with all its parameters, um, you have also an auto wire um, with lots of different parameters. And if you click here, what it says main, you go back to the uh, fader view as well. But let me show you a little bit more. You have access to a tremolo and vibrato with its parameter. You can see here, for example, you have uh, access to tremolo and vibrato um, dials. And um, you have a ring modulator um, with different parameters here. And um, you have also a fuzz, uh, module, which is distortion, effectively. And then you have ultimately also a space gate, which is a vintage reverb, really. And you can see it here from the parameters which are available. You can see here, for example, the setting from whole, large, all, etc., etc. Let's click on empty now to empty that slot. Um, and on the right hand side, you have um, the output, really. And you have again a fader, which you can use up and down to change the output level. And then you have a bypass here, which of course will mean the input will go directly out through the output. So we'll not go through the modules and you have access to parameters as well. And you have an indication for left and right channel as well, which of course will be green, but could also turn into yellow if you are processing related issue. I forgot to mention there is a mute here, a uh, button on the input level, which is useful, of course, if you want to mute. And you can see it's muting. It says here mute in red. And you also see the vertical lines here for muting. Now, let me show you some preset because before we go any further, so we are in bank A, we click on preset one. And you can see you have a uh, immediately number of modules or effects which have been loaded according to the preset. Sounds uh, really nice. Then you have access, let, let's try another one. Let's uh, access preset number two. Or I should say A2, really nice, A3. You can hear uh, the flanger here. Of course, I hope you have uh, headphones. You can hear, hear the auto wire effect in particular, but also the different chorus. And the other thing to say is that if you, you cannot use more than one module. So if you use auto wire here, and you want to use it here, and you were to change these to Ottawa, and it will swap here around because you can use only that effect once. So five effects for the five different slots. Right, and as I mentioned, you have access to, uh, let's go to up here, to additional user presets here for bank E to H, which are currently empty. Okay, let's uh, go a little bit further as a first tutorial, and let me show you a little bit the parameters for the input module. So, so let's click on parameters. 
So first of all, you have these type of controls, which is being used before by Igor in previous applications. So where in this case, if I modify uh, the dial is using the outside of the dial, which is for input, which is the equivalent of the fader that you have here. Practically, as you can see, it's changing here. So for example, if I increase this to maximum, I go back to main, you can see the fader, which is the maximum. So it's practically the same control, which changed the input. But if I then click in the center slowly, I activate uh, the center controls, right? And these, these correspond to the dynamic uh, noise, which uh, will set the maximum level that dynamic noise, which is based, of course, on the input input signal. So now you should start to hear, again, hopefully if you have an headphone, that noise which is coming through. And the noise, the type of noise is defined here. And you can have analog. And with analog, you have also that circuitry uh, simulation. You can hear it even when you are not playing. You can have it uh, digital as well. Similar, but it is a different type of noise. And you can also have it tape as well. And of course, you can double click to reset that and then click and wait slowly to activate the outer circle in terms of the die or that dial that you are changing. You have a gate here, which allows you to set um, when the, um, the gate open really at the level. And of course it will become, the indicator here will become green when it is going through. You can see at the moment I have raised the, the great thresholds. So if I press lowly, it will not necessarily let the sound go through. If I press again on the keyboard uh, with a higher velocity, it will go through. And you can set how fast or slow the gate uh, opens through these uh, settings here, which goes from fast to mid to slow as well. You can have access here to um, how you want to process really the input signal at this moment is stereo or you can have the two mixed up and treated as mono in both channels or you can take the left channel and then replicate that also on the right channel or the right channel replicated on the left channel so uh, or go back to stereo you also have an automatic gain control which has been used as well in other application from eager and um, it will keep uh, it will try to keep the level to maximum, of course, to keeping into account uh, minor variation. And you have three settings from the way you want to respond from fast to mid to actually slow. Be careful because it will try to keep the value to, uh, to the maximum. Oops, let's activate it fast. You see, immediately went up here uh, to, to maximum. And I'm, press, I'm pressing actually quite gently the keyboards on the external controller. But you can have it also as setting as low. We respond slowly, of course, in terms of how rapid that automate, automated, uh, again, control is reacting. And finally, you have these uh, actually change in terms of bit definition, which allows you to go more towards that low fi type of sounds which is found on the early digital of course devices or gear so you have 24 bit 16 bit 14 bits etc but there are other modules as well which goes even lower than that 14 bit again main to access back to the view of the fader um the output uh, a module works um, similar way so the fader here you can bypass it as i explained earlier and you have access to parameters as well. The parameters, again, have this dial on the top, similar to the, um, you know, on the input here, um, dial. And uh, on the outer dial, you have access to the output level, which again, corresponds to the fader here. And then if you click inside, and um, you have access to saturation as well. So be careful, of course, the saturation when you have uh, higher levels. Double click, of course, to reset that 
to the default settings. Then here you have access to setting for treble, middle, and bass for which you need to activate the tone stack. So let's activate the tone stack A. And let's change the treble. Let's change to B. So it's more, uh, it's thinner, the type of sound. See, it's a little bit more open. Okay, so now let's go back to main. And as I explained earlier, you can now introduce modules and effect. So just as a try, let's introduce, for example, um, why not? Let's go to module two and uh, let's introduce these tremolo here and vibrato. You can increase, of course, the depth here, moving the fader. But you, of course, have access to different parameters. And I will do a set of tutorials which go through each different effect. Let's try a couple of others uh, as well. So, for example, you can say we have this space gate. Really nice. And of course, you could change further the different parameters. So, um, and then you can go and uh, apply in another module, um, for example. So let's leave that to the space gate. And uh, I don't know, let's try the delay. you have access to the different parameters. But I will explain all of those in the next upcoming tutorial. So I'm going to stop here. This is just an introduction. So hopefully this is giving you um, a view and understanding of what vintage rack is in terms of, what, of emulating um, retro gear from the 70s and uh, 80s, including a little bit of the interface in my view. As uh, I explained, I will do next uh, as an additional set of tutorials which go through each different effect in more details. And I will try also to use different instruments, not just on, only a piano, so that you have a sense of how uh, the different effects uh, work with different uh, type of sounds. Okay, see you next time.